Hello everyone. Hey, thanks for joining me on today, this Friday's Lunch Alert. It's going to be a blessing to you. We're going to get into probably the most important, as far as importance, we're going to get into the most important verse of Hebrews chapter 11. Now listen, I pray that you've been adding your comments below. Tell me what you think. I'm trying to take this type teaching time and make it as practical as I can. Grab your Bible, Hebrews 11, we're going through that entire chapter right now. I'm on verse 6, all right? So it's easy. See, I'm the slowest, fastest preacher you will ever hear. I know that's a contradiction in terms, but you understand what I'm saying, all right? So get, let's get into it. You ready? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It's real easy. Follow it with me on your iPhone or your Bible or just listen up. Here it goes. By faith, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God, to please him. Talking about God. Do you know that there is one thing that God must have? Do you know God doesn't desire your sacrifice any longer? He gave his son. God doesn't desire any, he doesn't need anything from you. But what he does need from you and has to have from you for you to receive anything that he has, as far as his goodness, his mercies, all that, is your faith. You've got to apply your faith. And then he goes on to say in this verse, what faith is. I know you get into this idea that there are a lot of ideas of what faith is. Faith is, you know, I have faith tomorrow that I hope it don't rain. I have faith that I'm going to win the lottery. I have faith that this, I have faith. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about biblical rooted, grounded faith. And listen, watch the previous four shows of our lunch alerts and I'll bring you up to speed on what that is. But listen to what faith is. Biblical faith is this right here. It says, for it is impossible to please him without faith. Watch. For anyone who comes to God must believe he is. That word he is in the Greek is in the emphatic. Emphatic, which it adds emphasis. It puts an exclamation point on it. And I'm here to tell you, if you're going to do anything for God or believe him, even for salvation, you must believe he is. Now, now that's not a sissy, wimpy, well, you know, God is. That, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about he is. He is. It's, it's an, an emphatic. It's an absolute. You've got to have that type of faith. And you say, oh, pastor, I don't have that. Yes, you do. You do, you do, you do. Listen, I believe with all my heart, if you, you'll listen to what I've been teaching you the last four days and allow the word of God to go into your heart, it will stir up faith on the inside of you. And you will believe he is. What is he? What is he? You know, whenever uh, uh, Moses said, who, who am I to say you are? He says, tell him I am sent, sent you. Whenever uh, Jesus was dealing with uh, the disciples and whenever they came to arrest him, they said, it is, is it, are you the one? He said, it is I. I am. All right? He is the I am. But notice that this statement says he is. Is is in the present tense. Oh, don't you love it? It's not God will be your healer. And it's not that God was your healer. It's that God is your healer. Is puts God in your present situation, in your present circumstance, in the present tense. Do you know wherever you are, God is with you. God is. If you're, if you're uh, battling depression in your mind, he is your stability. He is your peace of mind. He is anything in everything that you would have need of. You don't need to look to a secular. You don't need to look to the world system to fix things. I'm telling you, he is. He is everything, all right? So anyone who comes to God must first believe, this is the number one thing of faith, that he is. Notice the number two thing. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I'm reading it right out of your Bible. Listen to this. Anytime people say, well, I, I'm acting in faith, are you believing he is? And he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder. Faith is always on the side of rewarding you. God wants to bless you. You know, I love my kids so much, and I want to bless them. I want to bless them. I want to be a blessing to their life. I want to do everything I can to add an increase into their life. Do you know that our God, who loves us more than I love my own children, he loves us so much, he wants to reward you. But you've got to bring him something. See, faith is the currency of the unseen world. Boy, that's pretty deep, isn't it? But just imagine it like this. In America, you can't bring Dominican money into America and buy things. 
You can't. Why? It's a foreign currency. A lot of times people are trying to receive from God with a foreign currency. God doesn't receive anything except by faith. People say, well, I pray a lot. Yeah, but if your prayers are in doubt, then you're not praying in his currency. You got to operate within his currency. His currency is faith. When you operate, and remember, faith is, he is and he is a rewarder. He is and he is a rewarder. When you pray prayers of faith like that, remember what I said a few days ago about the words out of your mouth. When you speak words out of your mouth that have to do with God, uh, he is and he is a rewarder. When you speak those words, boy, man, God gets excited. He gets pumped up because you're believing him. Well, hey, listen, that's about all the time I have for this week. Join me next week as we continue on our path of Hebrews chapter 11. We only made it into the sixth verse, but I tell you, it's been a blessing. God bless you. I love you. Add your comments below. We'll see you next week.